Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. We are going to be celebrating another set of heroes today with these cards. I am guest designing this month for Heffy Doodle. So excited to be joining Heffy Doodle and we're just going to be having oodles of fun. So let's pull out this stamp set here. This is going to be the superhero stamp set from Heffy Doodle and it is called super dudes so very cute lots of great sentiments lots of great little images in here um yeah so i had just a great time i love that they're kind of in you know different positions as well standing flying all the good stuff so i'm going to pull out some bristol smooth cardstock and i stamped them out with versamark versifying nocturne ink which is good for watercoloring this is my 96 set of arteza and those are the real brush pens so I started coloring these the other day um, and I was doing a lot off screen and I just realized <laughs> I fell back in love with them. I had put them aside for a long time. If you watch probably over the last couple months of videos, I was primarily playing with alcohol markers. And then I pulled these back out and uh, it was just like riding a bike, didn't really forget how to use them. And I had spent years practicing with them. I'm probably like two years. Um, and I, it was just reminded of why these are such a great medium. I'm going to go through and talk about a few of the tips for uh, getting the best results for these markers. Okay, so the first and foremost thing is you have to have the right paper and the right ink, mostly the right paper. That is crucial when you want a solid blend. Okay, so I you have to I have only found huge success with Bristol Smooth cardstock. You can get them to work on watercolor cardstock, but to me they don't blend as smoothly. So Bristol Smooth cardstock. Now that is a type of cardstock, but you can find it in multiple brands. But that's what you're looking for. So Strathmore has one, and then there's some that I've seen at the local craft stores that they the big box stores have them. So Bristol Smooth looking for that. Okay. So we have the paper and, um, we're going to get our real brush pens. Now I have a, uh, real brush pen set from Amazon that my husband found on super sale or whatever they call it. And, uh, there's 20 of them in the set and that's fine. If you find a less expensive kind. I think Artezas are super affordable. Um, and then they also, there's also the Zig ones that I find are too expensive. So find whatever you works for you, use what you have. But, um, the 96 set of Arteza has, is chock full of colors. I think a 48 set from Arteza will do just fine. Um, but anyway, so you get your markers. Now there's a couple ways that you can use these markers. I left all the coloring in so I can blabber on about it. But um, one of the techniques you can use is when you use color to color to color with no water. And they blend that well together. That's what makes them so awesome. So I tend to usually color out or smooth out all the marker coloring with the water brush, but it is not necessary. You don't have to do that. And so um, it just depends on when you're playing with them, which one you find is really how you, how you like to color. Okay. So you can use, even if you just had one color of the color theme, let's say you had one red and you, cause you bought a 12 set or something, you can still get dimension with that one red by pulling it out with the water brush. So that's really what I find to be so much fun about these markers because with alcohol markers, you really kind of have to blend with different shades of color. You can get some differentiation of shade with one, but it's not like this, the, it's a stark difference. So, um, yeah, so that's one way. And then, like I said before, you can use a dark brown, medium brown, light brown, and use them all to blend each other out. The only thing you'll want to make sure that you do is with the light color, like I'm going in with that light color of blue just there before the water brush. I want to make sure that if I get too much of that dark blue onto my light blue, I wipe it off on a paper towel because then I'll just kind of mesh the whole colors together and you want to keep that uh, difference. Another thing about these markers, they are optimal with two coats. So you can see I did one coat of the blue cape right there. I'm going to go back and I'm going to redo that once it's dried. And that's where I'm really going to get that um, beautiful depth from the marker coloring or the, yeah, the real brush pen coloring. These are markers, right? I mean, they say pen in the name, but 
they're markers. Okay, so I'm going to go um, just kind of color up what, what I'm going to do here. On another one of these, uh, these little guys, I did a red mask and red pants with a blue cape, which I actually liked better. Um, I tend to use a lot of these in the cards because I'm going to make four cards today. Now, what are we making cards for? So there are a lot of um, card videos that I've seen celebrating our um, first line defenders of the medical personnel. And I love that. Oh my goodness. They, they're just doing, I mean, there are, there are superheroes and I love that the crafting community has provided free downloads, uh, did, you know, digi stamps and all of that. So that's fantastic. So today I'm going to celebrate the other set of heroes because there's multiple out there. Um, one of the other set of heroes and that those are the school teachers and I am including parents in this because there's a lot of parents out there you know, to include myself who have become elementary school teachers overnight, literally overnight. <laughs> so I uh, just want to send some cards out to people who are doing a phenomenal job, both on the other side of the computer, tr still trying to get good curriculum to our children and working out this completely unfamiliar foreign territory of teaching our kids from afar to the parents that have to um, figure that out and work in tandem with these teachers and co-teach. So I think it actually for us has increased my relationship with the teacher. I have reached out to her from the beginning to try to so I can figure out what's going on. I reached out to her and asked her questions, but then also I let her know that I am available if she ever needs me to test run anything or just be on standby um, to help her through that process as she was getting going. Now, I have always appreciated teachers, and um, I hope it's because I've always appreciated what they do, but I know that there is a slight understanding that I have because my um, very close sister is a school teacher, elementary school teacher, and has been for oh, 30 years now. I will get back to that in a second, but before I do, I wanted to share you with you here. I was inspired by Dana Joy and by Pocono Pam who have been posting all over social media of their wonderful alterations to their stamps. I, again, was hugely inspired and I wanted to join in the fun and um, alter my stamps so that they are inclusive. Um, representation matters. And I think that we definitely can do a better job in the stamping community for uh, representing uh, a little bit of diversity, a little bit more of diversity, right? There are definitely some stamps out there that are doing that, but I wanted to show you, this is how I altered my two cuties right here. So the little boy and the little girl, uh, can't use the coordinating dies with that because of their beautiful hair. So I fussy cut those two out, but I did use coordinating dies for the other ones that I colored in. So they're getting ready to get the uh, to get put on cards here, but the first thing I'm going to do, I wanted to show you where I got my background paper. So um, I went to the internet and I found what I thought looked good because I wanted that childlike background paper from when they would, you know, you're practicing your penmanship. And so I saved the file. This is how easy this was, but I did want to leave it in and just in case you were curious. So I saved the file and then I went and found the file on my computer and I printed it from there instead of opening it up. This always works better for me. So I print, right click and print, and then right here I'm going to, you can fit to screen if you want. You can see that right there it kind of opens up a little more. So keep that in mind if your picture's getting cut off. But then I went down because I'm an A2 size card maker and I picked the one where it would put four of them on my paper and I increased the quantity to four. And by doing that, that will print out four of these backgrounds. I don't know if this is helpful, but just in case you were cur curious where I got my backgrounds for the cards I'm about to make because I wanted to make the theme school. And so I didn't have a stamp that was like that and I didn't have any more pattern paper. And so that's how I did it. Okay, so now I've trimmed them all down and they are going to be the background panel for all four of my cards. And we're going to do some other really fun things for these cards as well. So I'm figuring out how I'm going to do the layout for my cards right now because I want some I want to put two of the uh, superheroes on, some just one. Most of them have two though, and because uh, some people have, you know, they're a dynamic duo. My husband and I are 
tag team in the homeschooling situation. And so if you're curious which ones are us, we are all the way to the top right. <laughs> that is me and my husband. Um, so yeah, we're making it work. Uh, okay, so I am going to figure out now this uh, pencil and pen, those are dies that I have for my stash. And I just cut them out and got them ready. I love it because they're huge and they just make a statement and uh, they're gonna add some fun to this card. Now I am going to have most of the superheroes that are flying hold the utensils. And I do that by kind of tucking it behind the hand and in front of the face of this one and then between the two hands of the other superheroes up there, you can see them. Uh, and it just looks like they're super involved and they're holding on to the utensil. So that was, this was just a hoot to put together, honestly. So I'm using my Barely Art glue and I'm going to set those. I love this glue, I think it's phenomenal. And uh, it's, it dries fairly quickly. Not quick, too quick where I can't move stuff around, but quick enough where I'm not holding it there for a thousand years. I'm going to lay down my lady here and she's gonna be uh, laid down flat and I'm gonna pop up my superhero. Now I'm not gonna show you how I laid down everything in, in all four of these cards. We're gonna move on to the next step here in just a couple, a couple seconds. But I did wanna show you that by adding a little bit of that dimension with one of those uh, images, it makes the card a lot more interesting. But it also, you have to keep in mind if you plan on mailing out, you don't wanna to go too thick. So with these uh, little dimensionals I've had in my stash for a long time, they just add enough to kind of pop up off the card, which is fun. And he's also hanging off the side of that paper. So I thought that was also fun. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my stash because I have had chalk paper that I told myself one day, you're going to have to have this because you're going to use it. So get it. And I think I've had it for three and a half years. So I just said, let's go get this paper out. I have a six by six paper pad of chalk paper and I'm taking some white ink and this little dauber and I'm going to make it look like a chalkboard on the background. You can do this a variety of ways. You can use powder. Um, this anti-static powder bag would probably stick just fine on to uh, this black card stock, um, but I decided to use actual white ink because I wanted it to stay. I'm gonna stamp out some sentiments here with some Versamark sticky ink, and that's gonna allow my white embossing powder to stick to it, and then I'm gonna heat set that. We're gonna get a really super stark white look for these uh, images or for these sentiments. I am a huge fan of white embossing on black cardstock. I think white embossing is the most crisp way to get this look as opposed to white ink. Um, there's only a few white inks out there that would be good enough to see and in my opinion, none of them hold a candle to actually embossing. So it's definitely worth the step. It makes your sentiments pop up off the page and I love that. So I used, um, Three of the sentiments are from the Happy Doodle stamp set. So we have uh, you, actually, I don't know what they say, but we'll see them in a minute. <laughs> when you're uh, editing your videos, the screen is a lot smaller. So uh, one of these is you are my hero. Um, you will always be a hero to me and the world needs more people like you. You will always be a hero in my mind. That's what it says. In my eyes, in my mind. <laughs> I guess we'll see in a minute because my eyes so really fun sentiments and really thoughtful and they're just great so I am using some super fine white embossing powder there uh, from Nuvo and uh, it's the first time I used it and I'm a huge fan it worked out really well I am gonna bubble cut some of those that I can kind of get really close up and around those uh, sentiments because I think that that adds so much more interest than just a square now I do like the rectangle cutouts of my um, of my long sentiments. I think those are fine to do just, you know, like in a solid rectangle shape. They looked fine. And I don't know why I'm keeping, keeping this in the video. You can't see it. It's, <laughs> it's usually blurry. That's okay. We're moving on. So now I'm just showing you what they look like on the backgrounds. I did cut them a slightly smaller than an A2 size card because I wanted to have the card base peek out behind the black card stock. So you can see the panel is smaller um, than 
the you know the paper panel where it looks like they're notepads uh, it's smaller and the images take up a lot of space on there which makes it more interesting as well and so keep that in mind too when you have this big huge canvas trying to fill it up with two or three images seems overwhelming so if you cut them down a little bit and then add some layering it helps out I will say and now I'm just going to put my cards together and I'm going to skip around here the sentiments I decided which ones are going with which. And now I'm going to take a small, very small, the smallest stamp set from their stamp from the set. And it's this little solid star. And I'm going to take in some coordinating inks and just stamp out my little stars. I just thought they were cute. Who doesn't love stars on their homework? Um, I wish I got stars on my work that I turned in instead of a bunch of edits and track changes <laughs> because that just makes me sad. Can I get a star back that says super? Anyway, um, so I'm going to finish off my, my cards with that last bit of touch and I just thought they were fun and picking some of those coordinating colors always makes it really fun to play with. Don't forget about those little stamps in your sets because they're there for a reason. The owners of these companies have very strategically placed lots of cool images for us to use, so don't forget to pull those out. I am going to take some more Barely Art glue, and now I am just putting my cards together on their panels. And uh, very simple, that is it for as far as putting the cards together. I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna show you a bunch of close-ups so you can see these. I thought the coloring was uh, so much fun. It seemed, could seem like it's overwhelming as you look at all the coloring of the images that I did. But again, with the real brush pens, it's just too easy. It's too easy and it's too fun. And when you see all of that dimension and the depth come together, it's like, you feel like a professional colorist <laughs> that's right because and really you can call yourself a professional colorist because there's really no I don't know is there a degree for that who knows and we're gonna say we don't care about that we we can call ourselves whatever we want so yeah so I'm just gonna finish that up and that will do it I'm gonna add some sparkle here just to finish off the cards you always want to finish off your final embellishments when you have your cards put together in my opinion so this way if anything needs to dry you can just put them aside and they're already ready to go so I'm going to show you a bunch of close-ups here. I'm also, you know, lately I've been really trying to um, finish off my videos with something that reminds us of something positive and something helpful, hopefully. Um, so today I really just want to spend the time talking about all of the wonderful things that teachers and parents are doing to come together. I know firsthand how stressful this is. I know it is. In fact, full disclosure, the first few weeks of being home working and juggling homeschooling, I had a few mini breakdowns. Um, there were times when I didn't think I was going to be able to do both. I have a supportive network at work. Some people don't. And it's really difficult to do both. So remember, you're doing your best. We are doing our best. That's all we can ask. The children are learning so much more from this experience that if they, you know, fall behind a little bit in a certain subject, I am positive that they are getting it made up in other ways. So be kind to yourself, be kind to one another, and we will see you in the next video. On screen, you'll see a couple other videos that might be of interest to you. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss anything from me. And as always, I will meet you in the comment section. Everything I used in this video will be linked below in the description.